Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, this week is Anti-Poverty Week, and uh, the week is about highlighting the plight and experience of people living in poverty in our community. Mr. Speaker, it's also it's very important to during this week to tackle to tackle the problem of poverty and its impact it has on both on adults and children. So we need part of the week is to make sure that we understand what we can do, either as a government or community or as a society to tackle poverty in this country. Mr Speaker, the impact of, of poverty on children is well known, but I think it's important to restate, particularly the impact of poverty on the development of children, their physical development, emotional and intellectual and cognitive development, and what it has, the impact it has on their ongoing education and health and wellbeing. Now, we know that uh, early education, early intervention of young ch of children is very important for their long-term well-being. We know that children have to have access to education, a uh, whole range of things to develop and function in our community and society and to achieve great things. What, while we know that, we still accept, by that, by accept I mean we still um, tolerate in our community that thousands of children continue to live in poverty. Uh, Mr Speaker, the health of children living in poverty has been well researched. They obviously have very poor physical health. They also experience very poor mental health and the constant stress in those families which are in poverty is, is well known and documented. It also prevents them from reaching the emotional development or achieving the emotional development. And so often young, young children living in poverty um, at school are often the ones who, who um, perhaps do not, don't exceed in their schooling. Those, student, those children who don't participate in sport, those children who don't participate in music, uh, those children who don't participate in a whole range of different, uh, whole range of different community events and activities is because their poverty prevents them from doing so. And that gets me to the point, Mr Speaker, of the impact of poverty on children. It is twofold. First of all, the child does not reach their full potential. And I think every human being has a right to, have to reach their full potential. In that we are all different. We all have different skills and experiences, but we all have a right to reach our full potential. In other words, we all have a fair go to be the human being we can be. P young children living in poverty do not experience that. They, re they face a number of barriers and cannot, cannot achieve what they can, can do. And that gives me, leads me to my second point, Mr. Mr Speaker, is that as a society, we are robbed of the contribution that child can make to our community. If we have children living in poverty, not only are they not achieving themselves, but what they can achieve for their community and society is also lower, and therefore we are all robbed of that child's contribution. And that's, if no other reason, we should actually make a huge effort to make sure children don't live in poverty from both that child's perspective, but from a society-wide perspective. On adults, Mr Speaker, poverty uh, impacts on their health. Uh, you, people living in poverty, you can often see them having very physical poor health. In a very visible way, you can often see people living in poverty have very poor dental health, and that is a very visible sign of people living in poverty. At the extreme end of this poverty is also rough sleepers, poor housing. They have poor employment. Mr Speaker, you try to get a job if you have poor dental hygiene, you have poor clothing and presentation, and you have poor mental health. So rather than blaming people living in poverty for their lack of employment, let's create the opportunities where they can actually compete in the employment market. People living in poverty uh, cannot fully participate in community uh, and cannot achieve what, it, what they could do. Why do we have poverty, Mr Speaker? I, I think, sadly, the dominant narrative in our society is people choose to live in poverty and therefore they deserve what they are. I completely reject that philosophy. Uh, people live in poverty because we have enormous wealth inequality and income inequality in this nation and right across the world. If we can afford $244 billion in tax cuts for people living 
on incomes of $200,000, sir, as pro pro proposed by the previous Prime Minister, we can actually put more money to ensure that children don't live in poverty. Mr Speaker, healthy societies actually are those who are compassionate and extend and support those who are most vulnerable. In this week of National Poverty Week, we should tackle this 